Hey, it's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. Quick video here. I uh, wanted to make you aware of something that I'm seeing a, uh, at least one debt collector do, and I've seen this with a, with a few others, but I've sp seen this one a lot with this debt collector, Portfolio Recovery Associates. Uh, something that they're doing, I believe, as an adjustment to having a good response to their court summons to where they could potentially lose if the judge does not dismiss the case against them what they're doing is they're asking for it to to for to have a court date an actual trial and they will say that they don't they want a non-jury trial where they want the judge to hear all of the information and uh which is not uh that's something that's not uh, abnormal they usually do that but what is abnormal is that they're asking for this to be done a year later so imagine you went you got summons to court you responded to the court summons of the debt collector you made a very good one because you used the information that I provide they uh, somehow convinced the judge not to dismiss the case and then they put the case the actual uh, trial date one year away why would they want to do it one year away why wouldn't they want to do it right then and there so they can win and get their money because they want people to forget what they've also done with this is they've also established and put together the paperwork so if the individual does not show up to court they've already made the request to the judge to have a default uh, default judgment entered on in the uh, favor of the plaintiff, which is Portfolio Recovery Associates. So what they've done is they've uh, figured out a way either by, uh, you know, telling the judge they needed more time, they will have everything on that day of the, uh, of the uh, trial. It's going to be a non-jury trial and we will present all of the information, uh, I guess the responses to, uh, the, uh, uh, to the information that the individual, the defendant wanted and their response to us. And we wanna put this date one year from today's date. This is what they're uh, doing right now in hopes, even though they don't say this, they're hoping that this individual one year from now will not show up to court. Now, I want to, uh, and this was just sent over to us over the weekend, um, something that they may not be aware of, and I'm going to make our client aware of, is that this debt, by them doing this, adding one more year, could actually make this debt pass the statute of limitations to collect. Uh, this client is in a state where the statute of limitations is only three years. So if a, if a debt collector does not uh, uh, get a judgment within that period of time that they cannot collect on this debt or the original creditor, uh, if it's after the three year period of time, they cannot collect. And so what I'm thinking, and we're gonna uh, get the updated records on this client, is that this actual debt could potentially, by having them put it out one more year, would have this debt pass the legal statute of limitation to collect. And they're probably hoping that the, plaint um, that the defendant in this case doesn't even know or understand that. So this is something that I want to make you aware of this is real deal information. So to review, to review, Portfolio Recovery Associates, it looks like what they're doing when they get a response to their court summons and they and the individual shows up, responds, they see that the individual is in court, they'll ask the judge for more time to respond to that court summons and that they would like to go ahead and set up the, uh, the trial date they set it up for one year from the period of that hearing. So if it doesn't get dismissed, they go ahead, submit the paperwork to have the, the uh, uh, and they said in this one, a non-jury trial, one year from that hearing date. And they also go ahead and submit 
the documentation. Uh, so if the individual does not show up, they already had the paperwork submitted to, to request for a default judgment. And this is one. This is going to be happening one year from now. So they're hoping that the individual does not show up to court. They've already submitted the documentation. If they don't, if you don't show up to court, your responses are not going to be read by the judge. As like the judge isn't going to step in and be you. They're not going to step in. They might say though, and I've seen this. Some judges might say, "Well, we want to give them another opportunity uh, to show up." They might do that especially in certain states uh, like New Jersey and those types of states in California and Texas. Some of these states are saying, hey, we want to allow the uh, defendant more time. We're going to send them a notice of another hearing date. But it, just in case they don't, they're not going to step in and reach your responses and say, okay, I'm going to rule on this. They're going to rule on the, uh, uh, if the, plaintiff attorney is there, they're going to rule on that case and say, okay, you submitted the documentation, you submitted everything that you have, the, the defendant isn't here, we're going to go ahead and get you that default judgment. That's what that's what they're going to do. So that's the plan. That's the plan that they're looking at doing. Uh, remember, they can wait it out. They can say, hey, in uh, next year around this time, we're going to have like Five million dollars in default potential default judgments going through, so that's why they might do stuff like that. So if you have debt collectors trying to sue you, uh, or if you have debt collectors coming after you, I'm getting ready to give you the solution on what you need to do. First, if you have debt collectors that are just sending you that 30-day dunning letter, uh, the first thing you need to understand is that they cannot call you first. If a debt collector calls you first and you did not receive that letter, you can notify them and they're going to, you know, answer your phone, talk to them and say, I did not receive any information uh, about this in the mail. They might try to claim that they did, but you say you did not. I pick up my mail and you did not. And that's a violation. You're supposed to send me that letter. The reason why I want you to say that is because they are recording. They might hang up on you because they're going to know you can you request that recording that they have to have according to the Fair uh, Debt Collection Practices Act. They have to record that call. They have to notify you that they're trying to uh, attempt to collect the debt. And then you're saying to them, hey, let's use your system to trap you because you did not mail me that letter. Now, let's say that they did mail you the letter. They followed the rules. Look at that letter to make sure that it's not or to... Try to uh, identify what was if it was from a third-party mailing service. They're not allowed to use a third-party mailing service because they're not allowed to share your personal information with a third party about that debt. How, the, let me tell you some ways that you can try to figure out if it was done by a third-party uh, uh, agency, uh, a mailing agency. It might have those little dots on there. Like it'll look like it was typed with your uh, name. Now it can be typed, but it might have these dots over the top or these lines, these slashes over the side. Or it might say postage paid like a meter. Keep that envelope because if that turns out to be a third party and you can ask them, who sent this to me? And you, and you can do that within your response to that letter also. This is, this is I'm, I'm going to tell you how you do it. So uh, you're looking out for those. You're notifying them by phone if they didn't send it to you. And then obviously they're going to send it to you, but you're, you're building your, uh, your uh, case, so to speak, to make them stop coming after you for the debt. So if you got the letter, what I want you to do is I'm going to give you three letters that you can use. First, you need to check and see if that debt is past the legal statute of limitations to collect. If it's past the legal statute of limitations to collect, then all you have to do is send them the letter notifying them that they're trying to collect on a debt that's past the legal statute of limitations to collect for debt in your state. To find out what the statute of limitations is for your state, go to my website, thecreditrepairshop.com. On my blog, at the bottom, click the blog, and then type in statute, and then it'll come up with a page, statute of limitations for all 50 states. You can see where yours is. In the 
left first column is contract uh, debt, uh, like automobile, loan, stuff like that. It's going to be in the column number one. Column number four is going to be for open accounts, credit card type accounts. It is usually sh uh, shorter for open-end accounts than it is for uh, uh, regular contract uh, debt. If it's past the legal statute of limitations, all you have to do is send them that letter. No debt, debt validation is required. Now, if the debt is not past the legal statute of limitations, what you need to do is use my cease and desist collection activities letter. And inside of that letter, if inside of that, you can add the point. If that letter looks like it's from a third party, you can ask them in there, did they disclose your information to a third party mailing service? That simple line, you'll see on the document that I give you, you can add it in there and say, did you send this through a, on a, through a third party mailing service and see what they say. If they did, most debt collectors will say, we're gonna cease collection activities because they violated and they don't want this to just blow up and then all of the debt that they're trying to collect ends up uh, being uh, you know, put into a lawsuit or whatever, or people hearing about it. They just want, want you to go away. They'll say, we're gonna, you know, there was a mistake made. They may not even admit that it was a third party. They're just going to say, you know, um, we're not going to come after you for that debt. They'll just come up with some some reason. Then if they say, hey, we are coming after you for that debt, then I want you to use my debt validation letter to, to counter their responses. They're going to say, hey, we got a couple of bank statements. I mean, a couple of statements from the original creditor. It shows this balance. That's not good enough. You want them to prove everything. And what you're doing is you're actually setting it up for if they end up trying to do what they did to this client coming after you in court. Because then you're establishing, number one, that you've given them time to um, get documents. So when they try to sue you and go to court, you can tell the judge, hey, before we even got to this process, I've been asking for all of that, uh, those documents, and they never... Uh, got them to me, so I want this to be dismissed during this hearing, and you will have a good opportunity of that happening if you can show the judge the paperwork, the track, the, the paper trail, the certified mailing that you made to them saying, hey, I want these documents so I can review them to see if this stuff that you're sending to me about the balances, about everything is correct. This, uh, you know, complete account number, everything, contracts, all of that stuff. I've given them the opportunity to do that. They didn't do it. They just skipped and went straight to trying to sue me here in court. And I uh, submitted in my responses for that information again. We're here again in this hearing, and they didn't give me this information. So could you please dismiss this case? And you can get it dismissed. But it's, you know, a progression. It's a progression. So, uh if you have debt collectors coming after you, come on, uh, uh, everybody. We got to be serious about this. We got to figure out, uh, we got to stay focused and, and stay top of mind of what's after you right now, not thinking about it in the future. If you get on the debt collectors early, they will, you know, you're going to minimize anything that they can do moving forward. They just have to know that you're not going to be one of the people that are not going to fight through the process. And if you do that, they you will always end up in a better uh, situation. Not to say that they're not that they're going to stop coming after you because they're going to try to do different things like they're doing with this uh, case here, putting it out one year later, but it gives you a good chance of fighting and, and you can get it dismissed. All right. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video. It makes us different so you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit report scores, go to the website, yourthenumber3scores.com. Grab your reports, TransUnion, Equifax, Experian reports, and all three scores. If you want to get your FICO scores, we have a link below this video. Also, that you can get your FICO scores, see what credit card companies, mortgage companies, auto dealers, insurance companies, see, see the FICO scores they use to approve you for credit. And then my three pack of letters are down below. You can get my updated pack or you can get my free pack. If you get the free pack, 
please consider making a donation. I really appreciate it. Helps me monetize my time for speaking to you on the channel. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. Please post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of creditrepairshop.com.